1995 ended in misery for Alec Miller's men. An alarming slump in form culminated in Saturday's 7-0 hiding at Ibrooks. Hearts were expecting a New Year backlash from their oldest rivals, and they got one. Jock Brown was at Easter Road. The Hibs manager Alec Miller has reacted to Saturday's humiliation in Ibrox by making two changes in personnel. Mickey Weir and Chris Jackson make way for Michael O'Neill and Kevin Harper, but look for tactical changes with Andy Millen pushed into midfield to join Darren Jackson and Pat McGinley in a defensive role with Keith Wright to back up front. Hearts have had a 16-day layoff. But the team, which beat Aberdeen last time out, is intact, with Alan McManus continuing in central defence beside Pasquale Bruno and Paul Ritchie. And there's no place in the starting lineup for the match winner that day, John Cahoon, who remains on the bench. And the major boost to Hibs is the return after suspension of Michael O'Neill and all the Ireland International. He was ordered off the last time the sides met at Tynecastle, and the three matches he's missed have all ended in defeat. Alan Johnston's first goal of the season set up the fight back against Aberdeen. And he's one of a number of players being watched by the Scotland manager, Craig Brown. In Johnston's case, for the under-21 side to play Hungary in March here in Easter Road. And the referee this afternoon is from Edinburgh, Mr Bill Crombie. Hibs won the toss, so they've invited Hearts to kick down the Easter Road slope in the first half. Hibbs always preferring to play downhill in the second half. And there's a very early spot of ball over Jim Layton. Tied up well by Gordon Hunter. Well, only two changes in that Hibbs side from Saturday, but they really have rung the changes in terms of system. Stephen Tweed there with Gordon Hunter going across. Hans Eskilsson causing a problem for the Hibbs defence. And a very interesting spectator, the Scotland manager, Craig Brown, in the director's box. Now McAllister against Fulton. Both former Falkirk players, these two, of course, McAllister and Fulton. Hunter is scoring that away for the throw to Hibbs, which Pat McGinley should take. Well, the game passed McGinley by in the midfield on Saturday, so he's got a new role. And right back. This afternoon, here's Poynton, Robertson against Tweed, covering player again, Mike Manis, Johnston, good play by John Miller, this is Johnston, good chance on the run! wasn't picked up on the break there, that very good ball from Alan Johnston, Pete Eskelson, who drew defenders in, that's a terrific first-time effort by Poynton. Well, look at the space here for Poynton, nobody matched his run, Kevin McAllister didn't get back to him, Pat McGinley had been sucked in field, and that left the space for Poynton to collect his first goal in Hearts colours. That's Miller. Bruno has gone forward. We'll lose this race with Millen now. Possession conceded too easily though again by Hibbs. That's been a problem in this match as well as in the match against Rangers. Possession has not been guarded jealously enough. That's a good pass this time to Harper. Heavy tackle by Colton. Advantage will apply. But if he may well take action though, after this move breaks down. This is McAllister. Whipping in the cross, all right. The layoff goes astray. Harper is back on his feet unsteadily. Hart still at possession. Pointing now, looking for Johnston with a long raking pass. He's cut off by Tortolano. Johnston again. In goes Tortolano, heavily, but Mackay now has possession for Hearts. Here's Johnston once more. Robertson trying to turn. Hunter did well, kept his eye on the ball. Clumsy tackle by Tortolano, and John Robertson goes down. The referee waves play on, not happy at all with that as a penalty appeal, or a appeal for a foul anyway, just at the edge of the penalty area. Robertson is still down as McGinley comes forward. McAllister now takes over. 
Marcos the turn pass goes astray, it's picked up by Poynton, that's back to Gilles Rousset. A chance here of a treatment for John Robertson. And I wonder if the referee will have any interest in Steve Fulton for that late challenge on Kevin Harper. But here's how Robertson came to Grievan. I reckon Joe Tortellan is very lucky there, there was no infringement called by the referee. And now he is calling over Steve Fulton, the yellow card is administered. And I really think there's no complaint due from Fulton for that. The referee is also going across to Jim Jeffries. Now, I wonder if he's going to have words with the bench also. Yes, indeed he is. He's speaking to the Hearts manager. And he's also asking quite clearly, Jeffries, if that was not a foul on John Robertson. Right in the corner of the penalty area, Bill Crombie is telling him he wants to hear no more dissent from the touchline. Robertson will continue. Hearts fans relieved about that, I'm sure. And again, they're lofting it in, looking for Keith Wright, who's causing problems there for Bruno in the air, but that'll be a throw to Hearts. Now Fulton. Chase on here for Robertson against Tweed. Robertson did well, he had a chance for Eskilsson! Well, he had options there, the shot at goal was on, but so was a little pass sideways to Alan Johnston, who was completely in the clear, it's good play by John Robertson. And missed there by McGinley, a chance for Eskilsson, but just to his right was Alan Johnston all on his own. See it from here. There's Hans Eskilsson now, it was a good shooting chance in fairness. Johnson just out of the picture on the right hand side. Millen to Jackson. Sensed the presence of Johnston, had to go forward, run into Mackay. This is Harper, now O'Neill. Good close control. Keith Wright, Harper trying to work the ball clear. Very quick indeed, Harper. He's in on Rousset, and Rousset has lost his head. The referee Crombie's quickly there. Kevin Harper will be dragged to the side, he certainly was. A little bit late there with that one, it was reckless. Gilles Rousset, though, was fit enough to respond. The yellow card for Harper. Now, I wonder if the goalkeeper's reaction contributed to that. And he, too, perhaps, deserves a word in his ear for that very angry reaction. Well, the ball was certainly shot in the pass back, that's why Harper went for it. Rousset got there just ahead of him, it was a bad one by Harper, no doubt about that. It was Hunter. Keith Wright looking for McAllister. Space to work with now, attacking Poynton. Good cross in, there's a kneel! Heads have equalised! Oh, the classic old-fashioned! Dash to the byline by Kevin McAllister. And a delightful cross. Taylor made for the attacking player coming in. Michael O'Neill rising early. Bulleting the head of pass Bruce. And Hibbs are right back in the match. And what a difference this might make. Hibbs' confidence severely bruised. But now they have a fine goal from Michael O'Neill to put them right back in this Edinburgh derby. Joy for the Hibbs supporters. Pasquale Bruno lashing out there at Keith Wright, he'll be in serious trouble for that. Now it depends on the view of the referee, but it really was a bad one. The ball was well out of range. It's a yellow card for Bruno, and in my view it could easily be a red one. Alec Miller clearly thinks so too. Well, look at this now. The ball is well away from both players here. Now, that was just a deliberate swipe at right. Here's McAllister again, fouled twice there, quick succession, well he certainly is causing serious problems to Hart's defence, Kevin McAllister, very much in the mood now, he wants to be on the ball as much as possible, and he's forced Neil Point in to rethink his positioning, he's had to drop further and further back. Jackson looking for Keith Wright, that's Harper, it's a beauty! Rousset 
very helpless. It was brilliant play from Hibbs altogether. That header from right, measured for Kevin Harper, and a stunning volley to put Hibbs ahead. The half time whistle is gone. It's been a remarkable first half. It's been tough, hectic, and frantic. But Kevin Harper has scored the third of three magnificent goals in the first half to put Hibbs 2 1 ahead after Neil Point had scored an outstanding goal in seven minutes to put Hearts ahead. And then Kevin McAllister set up Michael O'Neill for the equaliser in 28. It's been great stuff here at Easter Road in the first half. It's Hibbs 2, Hearts 1. So a real sense of anticipation about this second half. For so long, Edinburgh Derby seemed to result in nil-nil draws frequently, but that's not the case in recent times. And Hibbs taking control towards half-time in the first half. We'll certainly have given Jim Jeffries a lot of work to do at half-time. We'll see the effects of all that work shortly. In goes Millen. Now McAllister. Held back clearly by Miller. Clear foul. Free kick to Hibbs. Well, there's certainly some anxiety felt in the Hearts ranks at the moment when McAllister gets possession for Hibbs. Short free kick, gives possession to Darren Jackson. Header down, met there by Miller, and it's a fine save by Rute. But the Hearts defence was sweeping that time. And they only made a lot of ground there to get on the end of that for the shot at goal. Well, look at the way Miller went for that with great determination, and it needed the strength and the agility of Rousse to make the save. Another substitution coming for Hearts, the bringing on John Cahoon. Well, this was the move which made all the difference against Aberdeen two weeks ago. Cahoon for Eskelson turned the game Hearts way. Different kind of attacking threat. Cahoon likes the ball to feet on the ground. Eskelson more of a physical menace up front and Bruno has challenged Darren Jackson Jackson still on the ground as McAllister makes for the byline good ball in, excellent ball in no hips play to take advantage though no, McAllister's wing play has been so impressive well the hips players incensed about the tackle and Bruno uh, by Bruno on Darren Jackson and that really was an excellent cross by Kevin McAllister well, there was Darren Jackson over carrying the ball slightly. It was a bad tackle by Bruno. He went over the top of the ball. There's no doubt about that. He's been booked already. Well, everyone enjoying the moment, but Pasquale Bruno, I think, could have gone off for his first foul. He's bought the yellow card. And uh, certainly could have been booked again for that one. A lot of enthusiasm on the hips stands. Keith Wright going to try and make something out of this. And he's very close indeed. That was made out of nothing by Keith Wright's pace. Well, looked to be no danger at all until Wright came racing across here. And that's a very good attempt. Well, one by Poynton. Well, McGinley. An awkward bounce there for Bruno. Here's O'Neill. Now Millen. Tortellano charging forward on the left. That's a good return pass from Millen to O'Neill. Taking on McManus. And an excellent clearance inside the area by Paul Ritchie. Continuing his superb form this season in just the right place. O'Neill causing trouble on the flank. That's where all the danger has been coming from. And first to the ball was Ritchie. O'Neill against Paul Smith. So three quarters of the match gone. Hibbs leading by two goals to one. Michael O'Neill got the first. Kevin Harper the second. A misunderstanding there with Tortellano. That's Millen. Paul Smith's header. In goes Millen once more. Now McAllister. He likes to get inside the box. The ball is feet. The like the ball across. Darren Jackson. Frustration there for Jackson, a golden opportunity to widen the gap for him. Jules Rousset sped himself, 
This is great running and wing play again by McAllister. Darren Jackson completely unmarked, headed the ball downwards, that was correct. But Rousset is in the way. Keith Wright, looking for the ball there by Richie inside the area. There's Darren Jackson, going all the way himself. Brought down there and the tackle by Poynton. Headed away by John Miller. Hearts trying hard to survive here. Well, there was a hopeful appeal for a penalty as Darren Jackson went down. There's no infringement there as Harper goes down. And in goes John Miller on Jackson. And this time the whistle goes. Well, Darren Jackson playing brilliantly there going into the penalty box. Asking a question now of the referee. Look at the way he lofted the ball forward. Keith Wright tried to help him out. And Poynton got to the ball. It was a fair tackle. Well, Jim Jeffries must be very concerned indeed. He's not only the side behind, but they're being outplayed at the moment. Good control from Cahoon. Now Johnston. It's good play by Tortolano. Here's O'Neill. Is it a quite a second half after being so impressive in the first? Good running here by O'Neill. Measuring that for Harper. That was great play again by Michael O'Neill. Knew exactly what he was going to do there. Went forward at pace. You can see him looking up there. He knew exactly where Harper was. Dragged defenders towards him, then picked out Harper for this first time shot. Spinning away for the corner. Hearts with the throw. Pressing forward now. Desperately looking for this equaliser. Three minutes remaining. Smith back to Lawrence. He's been given room for the cross. Tweed wins it. That was Fulton. McGinley challenging strongly. O'Neill now to Jackson. Pips breaking quickly through the middle. Keith Wright is there. He wants the pass. He has it now. This could tie it up. Well, the first touch let him down. Back it comes into the danger area. McManus is header straight to McAllister. Great save by Boussey. The shot from McAllister deflected. The big keeper did superbly there. Well, this could have ended it all for Hearts. McAllister so calm, going away from Fulton. Came off Richie. Excellent goalkeeping. Gordon Hunter attacking that ball very effectively. Well, a free kick's been given against Hunter. Last chance surely now for Hearts from this free kick. It's just the kind of free kick from which they equalised the last time they met here with a last kick of the ball. Lighted in by Bruno. That's won by Hunter. Retrieved now by John Miller. This is Johnston. Back with Fulton. Good possession this from Fulton, but he's not allowed any space to come forward. Now Johnston. Here's Robertson. Johnston again. The angle ball was a good one. No one at the far post for Hearts. And the ball has gone out, and the final whistle is gone. And Michael O'Neill scored the first goal for him. The equaliser. Pasquale Bruno shakes his hand. So does Alan Lawrence. The winning goal though was scored by Kevin Harper, who's now off the field. And Jim Leighton and Joe Tortorano save of the moment. How fortunes can change with 48 hours. It's the perfect tonic for Hibs. A win in the Edinburgh Derby by two goals to one, and it was thoroughly deserved. Well, what a difference from Saturday. Jim Leighton was disconsolate then, and now shows how quickly things can change in football. Kevin McAllister, an outstanding game for Hibbs. And there's Kevin Harper, hugged there by Keith Wright. The victory in the end for Hibbs. Jim, we saw pictures of you looking disconsolate on Saturday, and of course the contrast this afternoon. Tell us about the difference between the two games. I don't know, I don't know if you can see it. Um, we were really down, we were really hurt and depressed after um, Saturday and I think we owed it to the supporters with that performance today. Um, they were tremendous today, even when we went behind they still kept encouraging and encouraging all the time. So I think they, they appreciated the effort we put into it and we got our pride back um, by the effort and the way that we played the game. We saw you on Saturday with Andy Gorham and Richard Goff speaking to you that time. What was actually going on at that time? Um, it was just a wee bit of consolation for not, not just myself but for the team and saying, you know, you get, your, get yourselves and get the team back going again for, for Monday. And it was much appreciated. 
Well, what a hangover cure for him, Derek. <laughs> but how brave a win was that after Saturday's events? It was a good win because they, they needed a game quickly, Hibs, after that the humiliating defeat by Rangers on Saturday. And the best one for them is the Derby game against Hearts. They don't need the managers to get to them. They know they go out there. And they've got to win that one for the fans. That was an ideal tonic for them today. It certainly was. But they did have to come from behind after mm. a very nicely executed opener from Neil Poynton. Well, it was a good move by Hearts. Some lovely one-touch stuff. And they, they actually started the game better, I felt, the Hearts. And they, they came down the right. And Johnson just hits a ball in here. It's well struck. It's one of these balls that's going outside the box, really. But Poynton did ever so well. He's, he's came right at the back post. Pat McGinley was playing fullback today and uh, really he got caught, he was pushing right in in the centre of the pack. Look, he just got caught out a little bit, but you can't beat that. Half volley shot, tremendous start for Hearts. It certainly wasn't. It's his first uh, goal for the club as well. Mm. But how much have Hibbs missed Michael O'Neill, do you think, when he was suspended? I think he's very, very important for the team, for the balance, especially on the left-hand side. He gives them a lot of thought. He's, he's good on the ball, he's a good passer and he's worked great as immense. And uh, he certainly has been missed. And this little man on the ball had probably his best game for a long time. It's the old-fashioned winger getting to the byline and just getting the ball into the box. Doesn't look up. He knows he's got strikers in there. Just gets by his man. That was the first look he had there. He gets by the man into the box. And Michael O'Neill doesn't stay wide. Always wants to come into the box. He's in in front of the defender. And that's a great header. He just hung in the air and gives uh, Rusi no chance here from six yards. And this was a magnificent goal, really. I mean, Darren Jackson's 50 yards out. You're expecting him to get in the box. But that's a great ball into the box. And really, you can't beat that for a volley. You won't hit that ball any better. And I don't care how long he plays the game. Keith Wright does well. Unselfish again. Just nodded that back. Takes his time. Gets his head over the ball. That's a great strike. Keep him no chance again. Alec Miller said that was a candidate for goal of the season, do you agree? Well, why not? There's a long way to go yet, but that'll take a bit of beating that. It's the most difficult ones to hit the shots on the volley, keeping it down, and certainly the youngster did it. Well, it's certainly a good win for Hibbs, but how aggrieved do you think Hearts will feel, particularly after having a penalty claim turned down when they were 1-0 up? Well, I think that was a turning point in the game. You know, they're 1-up, and remember, Hibbs are just taking a trouncing. And John Robertson, this is when they're 1-up, and really Joe Tortolano, a challenge here, which is crazy, on the corner of the 18-yard box, doesn't make any contact with the ball there. Goes straight through John Robertson. For me, that is a penalty kick, and no wonder Jim Jeffries got a, a lecture from the referee. For me, that's at least on the line, which is in play, which is a penalty kick. Well, Hibbs had lost their last three games and had conceded 13 goals. Mm. What do you think the problem was there, and are they over the worst of it now? Well, who knows? Uh, only the next few games will tell that. But uh, certainly, they're, they're making bad mistakes at the back, and they've had players that haven't been out. There's McGinley playing full-back today. Obviously, there's no consistency.